when Susan observed peculiar puncture like marks on her infant son Roy's nose. Her alarm was immediate and instinctual. The small, red dots were unlike anything she had seen before, and an unsettling mix of confusion and fear gripped her heart. What could these marks mean for her child's health? Were they something benign, or did they signal a more serious issue? Recognizing the urgency of the situation, she quickly arranged an appointment with a pediatrician for the same day. Her anxiety only deepening as she waited for the appointment. Navigating the challenges of single motherhood at 40 had already presented its fair share of difficulties for Susan. Romantic disappointments had left her weary but not defeated, and she had learned to hold on to hope, particularly with her latest online connection. Al, their virtual conversations had been promising, filled with laughter and shared interests, making her optimistic that this time, things might turn around, as they planned to meet in person. Susan meticulously prepared herself, selecting a chic yet comfortable outfit and carefully applying her makeup. She hoped this date would signify a positive turning point in her personal life. One that could bring a sense of stability and joy amid her challenges. However, the date did not live up to her expectations. As they sat across from each other in a trendy restaurant, Al's disconcerting lack of interest in Roy, who was an integral part of her life from a previous relationship, became glaringly apparent, he barely acknowledged Roy's presence in her stories, which left Susan feeling unseen and undervalued. This apathy toward her child made her question the potential of this relationship. The evening, which she had envisioned as a new beginning, instead left her with a sense of disillusionment. Doubts flooded her mind, was it reasonable to hope for someone who could accept both her and her son? Was there any merit in continuing this fledgling relationship? The questions echoed in her mind long after they parted ways. The very next day, Susan's concerns shifted back to her son when she noticed Roy frequently scratching his nose. Displaying obvious signs of irritation, his little face scrunched up in discomfort, and her maternal instincts kicked in. Upon examining him more closely, she was shocked to find small, hole-like openings within his nostrils. At first, she thought they might be caused by some external irritant sticking to his skin. But a thorough inspection revealed that these were actual perforations embedded within the skin itself, which seemed to cause him pain upon contact. This alarming revelation drove Susan to act swiftly. She needed to understand and address this mysterious condition. Deeply concerned about her son Roy's sudden illness, she reached out to their trusted family physician who promptly scheduled a semi-urgent appointment for later that afternoon. During their conversation, the doctor advised Susan to carefully consider any recent events that might explain Roy's troubling symptoms, hoping to pinpoint a potential cause. After ending the call, Susan was left feeling perplexed and anxious, unsure of what could be behind her son's illness. As she pondered over their past week, Susan remembered the seemingly harmless hike in the nearby forest they had taken. It struck her that during this outing, Roy could have unknowingly encountered something hazardous. Perhaps he had inadvertently touched a poisonous plant or inhaled spores from a hidden patch of mold. Although no particular incident came to mind, the possibility remained in the back of her mind, darkening her thoughts. Life for Susan usually revolved around her serene home environment, which she had meticulously curated to foster comfort and calmness. It was punctuated by gentle strolls in nature with Roy, who delighted in the simple joys of the world around him. She often took breaks at her favorite local cafe, where the aroma of freshly brewed coffee mingled with the sweet scent of pastries, allowing her to catch up on work or simply indulge in a good book. However, recent events had thrust her into unforeseen chaos, not just with Roy's mysterious ailment but also in her personal life. With the weight of her son's health scare heavy on her heart, Susan also reflected on her recent attempt to find companionship, filled with a mix of hope and nervousness. She had meticulously prepared for her date with Al, viewing it as a potential fresh start after a long period of being single. But as their evening progressed, her initial enthusiasm waned. Al's aloof behavior, especially upon learning she was a single mother, left her feeling uneasy. Although he occasionally flashed warm smiles and made attentive remarks about her life, 
His overall demeanor was confusing, creating a sense of emotional distance that Susan found disheartening. This mix of personal and maternal challenges left Susan yearning for a return to normalcy. The promise of new love had flickered brightly but was quickly overshadowed by the shadow of uncertainty regarding her son's health. The upcoming doctor's visit loomed large in her mind. She hoped it would bring the clarity and relief she so desperately needed, allowing her to focus on healing for Roy and perhaps reevaluate her choices in love. As she prepared for the appointment, she took a deep breath, reminding herself that she had faced challenges before and emerged stronger each time. With determination fueling her, she clutched Roy close to her heart, ready to tackle whatever lay ahead. In the days following their brief interaction, Susan found herself contemplating why he had initiated contact with her in the first place. As she pored over their past communications, she came to realize that her feelings of isolation might have impaired her ability to judge his intentions accurately. Despite this, she couldn't dismiss a persistent feeling of unease particularly because of several mysterious occurrences she had noticed lately. Yet, since there had been no further communication from him after the previous night and they had not shared any physical proximity, connecting him to these strange events seemed far-fetched. Amid these unsettling reflections, Susan had to prioritize more pressing issues at hand, notably her son Roy's medical consultation. At the health facility, Roy's distinct nasal anomaly became a focal point drawing both curious and concerned stares from fellow patients in the waiting area. This was a feature of Roy that Susan had not fully recognized until it was glaringly apparent to onlookers. In the consultation room, the attending physician was visibly surprised by the uniqueness of Roy's condition. He admitted that throughout his practice, and in his review of medical literature, he had never encountered such a case. The bewildered doctor proceeded to order a comprehensive set of tests and meticulously assessed Roy, who, despite his initial discomfort, now appeared strangely serene. Feeling overwhelmed, Susan excused herself to get some fresh air, leaving her son in the competent hands of the clinic's staff. During her absence, an urgent update came through to her doctor from a peer in an online medical forum. This message not only shed light on the possible origins of Roy's symptoms but also carried a critical warning. Immediate medical intervention was necessary. A physician familiar with similar cases had indicated that without prompt treatment, Roy's health could rapidly decline, posing potential risks to Susan as well. This revelation prompted an immediate and focused response from the medical team. As Susan returned, refreshed from her brief respite, she felt a sense of anticipation mixed with anxiety. Her doctor was preparing to discuss the new findings regarding her son Roy's mysterious ailment. Fully aware that the path ahead would be challenging but crucial for their well-being, Susan had been anxiously waiting for a response to her frantic queries. Her mind racing with the implications of her son's condition. Almost immediately after she finished reading the latest message on her phone, confirmation of her worst fears arrived sending a shiver down her spine. The diagnosis from the other doctor was indeed accurate. The words, flesh-eating virus echoed ominously in her mind. Alarmed by this confirmation, her doctor hastily exited his office, a worried look on his face, which triggered a wave of chaos throughout the medical facility. The sterile hallway was suddenly filled with a cacophony of hurried footsteps and anxious whispers. Nurses exchanged worried glances while medical staff scrambled to prepare for what lay ahead. Meanwhile, Susan, who had just returned from the restroom, noticed an alarming change in Roy's condition. His nose appeared to be deteriorating rapidly. The once slight discoloration had now evolved into a stark, alarming shade that frightened her to her core. Susan felt a knot of dread tighten in her stomach, determined to seek help. She knew she needed to speak with the doctor right away. However, a new problem arose. The door she had previously used was now inexplicably locked from the outside. Trapping her and her baby inside the room, panic gripped her heart as she rattled the doorknob, only to find it securely locked. Desperation clawed at her, urging her to find a way out. As Susan tried to process her predicament, she overheard her doctor outside urgently informing others that he had contacted the police.
The staff's visibly anxious response to Roy's deteriorating condition escalated the situation, causing a multitude of fears to race through Susan's mind, struggling to maintain her composure. The walls of panic began to close in around her. In a desperate attempt to escape, Susan delivered several forceful kicks to the door. The sound echoed ominously in the small room, and to her relief, the lock finally gave way, and the door swung open. However, she was met with screams from the people on the other side. Her doctor, taken aback by the sudden breach, quickly instructed everyone to keep their distance and sternly warned Susan not to approach. Seeing the fear etched on her doctor's face underscored the seriousness of the situation. It was a look she had never seen before, one that made her heart race with dread. The doctor's eyes darted around the room as he hesitated to speak. Weighing his words carefully, refusing to be kept in the dark any longer, Susan stood firm, her voice trembling with urgency as she demanded information. What's going on? Please, just tell me, before the doctor could reply. The door to the examination room swung open with a force that sent a shudder through the air. Three armed police officers stormed in, their presence immediately heightening the tension. The sharp clink of their boots against the hospital floor echoed ominously as they swept their gazes across the room. Quickly honing in on Susan, her heart raced as the doctor, with a sudden burst of panic, pointed directly at her, shouting, It's them. The officers exchanged a quick, silent communication before drawing their pistols. The metallic click of their weapons left no room for misunderstanding. The situation was far more dangerous than Susan had realized. Their faces were stern, a mixture of concern and the weight of authority bearing down on the room. Susan's pulse quickened as her vision blurred, her mind unable to process the chaos surrounding her. Instinctively, her hands shot up in surrender, tears pooling in her eyes. Please. Just tell me what's happening, she begged, her voice quivering with fear and desperation. The officers, noticing the red, spreading lesions on her nose, took a collective step back. Keep your distance, ma'am, one of them commanded, his voice firm but measured. Another officer, slightly younger and softer in demeanor, kept his gun lowered and spoke more gently, though his words carried the same gravity. Ma'am. You and your infant son need to be quarantined immediately, he explained, his gaze never leaving hers, trying to calm the rising panic in her eyes. Susan's breath caught in her throat, the weight of his words crashing over her. Quarantine? A million thoughts raced through her mind, her legs weak beneath her. The doctor, now looking visibly regretful for not explaining sooner, leaned closer, his voice low and hurried. We're dealing with a severe flesh-eating virus, he said gravely, his eyes filled with worry. It's not something we've encountered before, and we're having to follow emergency protocols we've never even practiced. The words, flesh-eating virus hit Susan like a sledgehammer. Her knees buckled, and she had to catch herself on the edge of the examination table to remain upright. A flesh-eating virus? She repeated in disbelief, her voice barely more than a whisper. It sounded like something out of a nightmare, not reality. She wanted to scream, to wake up from this surreal nightmare, but she could only stand frozen, her hands trembling. Where did this come from? She asked, her voice hollow. How could this happen? The officers, now more relaxed in their stance but still alert, asked her about her recent activities. Susan, still reeling, tried to collect her thoughts. Yesterday, I took Roy hiking, she stammered. We went to the park by the river. And then, her voice wavered as the fear clawed at her chest. I went on a date. But the date had nothing to do with this. I'm sure of it. Roy must have come into contact with something during the hike. Her voice cracked as she spoke, her mind frantically racing through every step they had taken on that hike. Trying to remember any plants or objects they had touched. Had Roy fallen into the grass? Touched a strange leaf? It was all a blur now. Lost in the fog of panic and guilt, I don't know what it could have been, she added, her voice breaking. The police quickly moved into action, their expressions tight with determination. They needed to secure the area where Susan had hiked, to investigate every possible source of contamination, as they hurried out of the room to organize their search.
one officer stayed behind, assuring her again that everything would be done to protect her and Roy. But his assurances did little to quiet the terror building inside her. As Susan and Roy were whisked into isolation, the gravity of the situation sank in. The sterile walls of the quarantine room felt like a cage, the air too thin, too stifling. Roy, blissfully unaware of the severity of their predicament, lay curled in her lap, his small body warm and peaceful. But Susan's heart was heavy. The helplessness gnawed at her as she watched her child, knowing there was nothing she could do to protect him now. The doctors, while compassionate, moved with swift, cold efficiency, treating them both as potential carriers of something far more dangerous than she had ever imagined. Hours dragged on as the police combed through the park, their efforts relentless. The officers sealed off the hiking trail and scoured the area for any clue that could explain the source of the infection. Susan could hear murmurs from the hospital hallway, police radios buzzing with updates, their voices clipped with urgency. Time seemed to stretch unbearably as she sat, her mind spiraling with worst-case scenarios. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the officers returned with grim but necessary news. They had identified the cause a non-native, invasive plant species, known to carry a particularly virulent pathogen, had taken root in the park. The plant, not native to the area, had likely spread unnoticed until now. Once it was confirmed as the source of the virus, authorities immediately took steps to eradicate it. Susan's relief was palpable, though it did little to ease her immediate fear for Roy. While the doctors had the proper medications to treat the infection, Roy would need to remain in isolation until they were certain he was in the clear. The waiting, the uncertainty, it was almost unbearable for Susan, but she had no choice but to endure. In the days that followed, the situation began to stabilize. No new cases of the virus were reported, and Susan's condition improved significantly. Her skin lesions faded, and her energy slowly returned, with the threat of the infection contained. The community breathed a collective sigh of relief. The medical team praised the rapid response of the police and the precision of their work, which had undoubtedly prevented a full-scale outbreak. By the end of the month, Susan had fully recovered, her strength and spirit returning in full force. Looking back on the ordeal, she couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the police who had acted so swiftly, for the doctors who had cared for her and Roy and for the countless strangers who had offered their prayers and well wishes. She had faced a terrifying situation and emerged stronger. As she began to settle back into normal life, Susan felt a new sense of purpose. The experience had been harrowing, but it had also reminded her of her own resilience. Every laugh, every hug with Roy felt like a victory, a reminder of how precious life truly was. And with renewed hope, she decided to move forward in her personal life as well, preparing to resume dating, this time with her priorities clear. She would open her heart again, but always with her son's safety and happiness at the forefront of her mind. Do you have any thoughts after watching the above video? Tell us in the comments section. We'd like to hear your thoughts. That's for today's story and if you liked the video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.